and, and frankly, some of the best conversations I ever had when I was inside of Sears was after five o'clock when most people had gone home and you know I'd walk into the uh, legal officer's office and we would just talk about what are you working on and what am I working on and we'd say hey I didn't know you were doing that I could help you with that and I could do this for you and so a lot of these things happened again with personal one-on-one -on -one interactions despite the internet and despite all the tools that we have I still believe that face-to-face -face communication and one-on-one -on -one relationships are, are what make a huge, huge difference in the culture of the company and how willing they are to accept new ideas and how willing they are to act um, in a very responsible way. I don't know if that answers your question. I hope it does. Yes, right behind you. Yeah, the question is merging authority and transparency so that you've got some control, but you also are viewed as authentic. Okay. Any ideas on that question? <laughs> Anybody else want to answer it? Um, I think that if you think about who you trust personally and why you trust them, the principles that apply to personal relationships also apply in the corporate environment. Um, so people that you trust are generally people who you view as open and transparent. You're probably afraid of people who come across as a little scary and maybe they never say a word and you wonder what they're thinking and you know you start to, to create all these images in your head about what's going on in their, their head. And people who are very open and inviting tend to be more trusted. So I think the same is true in a corporation. If you're going to be open and inviting, and if you're going to share information, um, it used to be that the financial information was only shared with the top executives. There are companies now that share detailed financial information with every employee so that you know what's working, what's not working. They want ideas on how to do things better. Well, that's really about transparency. That's about saying this is not information that we're going to hold close and that we're going to keep from you. We're going to share it with you, and here's why, because we want your input. So transparency and trust, I think, are developed in a company the same way they are in interpersonal relationships. Yes? Do you see the day coming, then, when communication will be integrated in an MBA education? MBA? Yeah, maybe this is a question for you. Uh, the question is, will communications be integrated into an MBA program? I think a lot of, uh, you know this better than I do, but a lot of MBA programs are beginning to have a class on communications or corporate communications. Um, some may have a class on public relations, um, but I think it is still viewed as something that is hard to get your arms around. And a lot of MBA programs are very quantitative. And so you've got to have numbers, you've got to have quantitative information. Um, I don't know. Do you want to answer that question? That's a great question, Devin. I mean, a lot of MBA programs, what it's now being defined as stakeholder management, and it's very similar to public relations, but it's a, it's a concept of managing your relationships with your key stakeholders. Um, actually, as a, as a public relations faculty member, uh, if it does move over to the business school, that simply means that I'll get paid more. So, <laughs> I'm all in favor. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot to be learned and a lot to be shared. And uh, one of the things I think that the Arthur Page Society does and the Institute for Public Relations does is trying to get business and, and communications programs to communicate more, share more of our knowledge together so that we can positively affect the, the, uh, the way that communication enhances corporate reputation, enhances corporate practice. So. Yeah. Good, thank That's you. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions that the professor in the front row can answer? <laughs> okay. All right, good. If we have no other questions, uh, are we done? Okay. I just want to uh, uh, thank all of you for coming out this evening and listening to, uh, to our speaker uh, tonight, Tom Nicholson. Would you uh, join me in, in another round of applause and thank you for all the speakers here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.